Hi, welcome to Neurofeedback 101. This is going to be a very basic introduction to neurofeedback, and I will be answering some of the most common questions that we receive, as well as any that you have for me today. So feel free to uh, type questions into the chat, and I will try to get to them um, by the end of the presentation. Um, I think the slideshow lasts about 20 minutes, so there should be plenty of time to discuss uh, afterwards, but I want to do just cover the basics, so let's just get started. Um, so a brief uh, background on me. I first learned about neurofeedback about eight years ago when I was looking for ways to help one of my children who was struggling in school and socially despite being very smart. It was a long journey involving many tests, medication, therapy, and counseling, none of which proved very helpful. A therapist finally suggested that we try neurofeedback, and that was the first time I'd ever heard of it. That began a journey of intensive research and discovery for me. Once I saw how incredibly helpful it was for my child, I was thrilled, and I couldn't wait to try it for myself and see what it could do for me. At the same time, I felt really upset that no one had suggested this option many years earlier, as it could have saved so much suffering. Since then, it has been my mission to raise awareness of and access to neurofeedback for others. I became a trainer and opened a part-time office in early 2013. And in 2015, I left my corporate career and expanded my neurofeedback business, which is now my life work and my passion. I now have two offices and 24 rental systems, which I ship to clients throughout the USA for home, home use. I also moderate a worldwide forum. I teach basic certification classes for Neurooptimal, and I help other trainers get started. My business profits are used to fund research and pilot programs and projects that provide free or low cost neurofeedback options to various groups. So what is neurofeedback? In general terms, neurofeedback is computer-assisted self-regulation of the central nervous system. It's a workout for the brain. <clears throat> there are several types of neurofeedback and many different brands of equipment. To be considered neurofeedback, there must be a measure of brain activity and feedback mechanism based on that brain activity. A little bit of history about neurofeedback. The field of neurofeedback is not new. It has been evolving since the 1960s, when uh, Professor Barry Sturman at UCLA discovered that cats in his lab could be taught to adjust their brain activity at will. These cats were rewarded for maintaining a certain brain state of calm focus. So if you think of a cat watching a bug, perfectly still but ready to pounce. These cats would enter this brain state at will in order to receive a reward of broth and milk. About this time, NASA was having concerns about the toxicity of rocket fuel exposure for astronauts. They wanted to know just how much exposure would be safe. Barry Sturman's lab was asked to study this, and so cats in the lab were injected with rocket fuel and observed. Unsurprisingly, most of the cats succumbed to seizures and started frothing at the mouth. But what perplexed the researchers was that a handful of cats did not succumb and they were able to avoid seizures. They soon realized that it was the same cats that had learned to control their brain states in the earlier experiments. Somehow these cats were able to avoid the same fate as the others when exposed to the same toxins. This finding launched the field of neurofeedback studies in earnest. This story and a lot more of the fascinating history of the field can be found in a book called A Symphony in the Brain by Jim Robbins. And I have a book reference slide coming up, so you don't need to write that down. So um, as I mentioned, there are several distinct types of neurofeedback. There is linear, dynamical, and low energy or lens. And it's really important to know the basic differences so that you won't be confused by what could otherwise seem like conflicting information. I will touch on the highlights of each type. So linear, also known as protocol-driven, classical or traditional neurofeedback. Um, this type of neurofeedback is based on the medical model of diagnosing and treating. It is used to target symptoms based on diagnosis. Practitioners may or may not use a QEEG, or a quantitative electroencephalograph, uh, otherwise known as a brain map. 
Typically, a normative database based on normal or average people in your age group is used to determine where your brain deviates from the norm. And then protocols are chosen to help nudge or encourage your brain to behave more like an average brain. Standard protocols may be used to target symptoms based on your specific complaints without the use of a brain map. For this type of neurofeedback, trainer qualifications, education, experience, and skill are very important factors that can influence the results. This type of neurofeedback can be very effective in the right hands. There's also potential for unwanted side effects that can come from overtraining. Practitioners must choose the order in which they will work on issues uh, when there's more than one presenting complaint. So for instance, if you have a child with ADHD and anxiety, the protocol for helping with focus may lead to a temporary worsening of the anxiety. In cases where overtraining or unwanted side effects occur, they can typically be resolved by reversing the protocol. So it's really important to promptly communicate everything you're experiencing with your trainer. Most of the, <clears throat> most of the currently published research to date has been done using some form of linear or protocol-driven neurofeedback. And we have dynamical nonlinear neurofeedback, otherwise known as neurooptimal. Uh, neurooptimal <clears throat> has been around for about 20 years. This type of neurofeedback is a training model. It's not a targeted treatment or therapy. There's no diagnosis necessary, and everyone can benefit regardless of their specific goals or diagnosis. Um, the feedback adjusts automatically in real time for each individual, so the system can be safely used by anyone. There's no special expert expertise required to use it safely and effectively. The system does not nudge or push the brain in any way. It merely provides feedback about what the brain is doing in real time. Think of the rumble strips on the side of the road that let you know when your car is leaving its lane. The rumble strips merely offer information. It's up to you whether you straighten up the wheel to stay in your lane, or if you're intending to pull over onto the shoulder, you continue on your course without paying attention to the rumble strip. The brain is designed to use feedback from the environment to continually refine and improve its processing. And even a severely damaged brain will use the feedback to its advantage. So neurooptimal puts the central nervous system in charge of the process, and because of this, there's no risk of unwanted side effects. Neurooptimal is simple to use and basically foolproof, which makes it a good choice for home users. Because neurooptimal is whole brain training and not a targeted treatment, we cannot predict the specific changes that one might see or the order one might expect to see changes in. With training, the brain is becoming more resilient and flexible, and what that looks like is unique to each individual. Low energy neurofeedback systems or LENS. Um, there are several different types. I think IASIS and uh, ClearMind are also low energy. This type of neurofeedback actually sends a mild electrical signal to the brain. The trainer places sensors on the scalp and the computer analyzes readings of brain activity from various locations. A mild electrical signal is sent back to the brain that is intended to disrupt, to shake up or break up patterns of activity that, are, <clears throat> that have been selected based on certain parameters. The idea is that disrupting the brain's own signal with another signal that is slightly different, uh, the brain's patterns will be disrupted and will settle back down into a more effective, better pattern. This is a treatment model and must only be done by a well-qualified professional. There can be a bit of a hit or miss with this method until the trainer finds the sweet spot for that client. The skill and patience of the provider can greatly impact the outcomes with this method. When done well, the results can be quite fast, but by the same token, there is a potential for negative or uncomfortable side effects that can also occur quite quickly. Then there are many systems on the market that are not neurofeedback. Um, entrainment devices and gadgets may be confused with neurofeedback based on their marketing, so it's important to really investigate. Uh, chances are if you can buy it on Amazon, it's not neurofeedback. These devices can be helpful for promoting a specific state at that moment um, when you're actually using them, such as relaxation or alertness. But comparing them to neurofeedback is a bit like comparing a little red wagon to a Mercedes Benz. 
so what happens in a session? With a linear neurofeedback system, uh, you will typically sit in a comfortable chair and your trainer will place sensors at various locations based on your symptoms and complaints. The, the linear system, so they're um, going to place the sensors based on your complaints or the brain map. The trainer will then set thresholds for the selected protocol. You might be watching a movie or playing a video game where the screen goes grows dim or the game slows down if you're not focusing, for example. Or the screen becomes brighter or speeds up as a reward when your brain is behaving the way the trainer has determined is desirable. The unconscious mind quickly grasps that what is going on, um, that it is driving what's going on on the screen and will strive to gain more rewards by continuing to do more of that. The idea is that when your brain has experienced this desired behavior, it will continue to produce that behavior even after the training stops and the rewards are no longer being given. The hope is that the brain will recognize the value in this new behavior and adjust itself accordingly. Um, with a low energy system, the trainer will talk with you about your concerns and based on what you report, the trainer will select a number of locations on the scalp to work with. Sensors are placed on the scalp and the computer analyzes readings. When certain parameters are met, an electrical signal will be sent to the brain at specific locations. The provider will determine how many locations to treat during each session for each client, depending on their professional judgment about how much a client can tolerate. In a neurooptimal session, you typically sit in a comfortable chair and listen to music or watch a movie. Your trainer will place sensors on your scalp with paste, and these allow the computer program to monitor all brain activity 256 times per second. The brain's electrical activity is monitored for flutter in signal. When flutter is detected, the software generates an interrupt in the sound, the music or the movie soundtrack, whatever you're listening to. This brief pause alerts the central nervous system to observe its own process at that moment, and the central nervous system will use that feedback to automatically self-correct as necessary. There is no conscious effort required, so you can read, play on your phone, close your eyes, or even drift off to sleep during sessions. So neurooptimal sessions are typically very relaxing and enjoyable. We often have people fall asleep in our office or even at um, expos where we have vendor booths. That's, these are all our clients enjoying sessions. Um, so frequently asked questions, uh, how many sessions will it take? This question is very difficult to answer. Everybody's different and there are so many possible things going on in a person's life that can influence uh, how quickly they see changes with their training. Um, what we say is that most people will start to notice something shifting within the first six sessions. And I'm talking from my own experience here uh, as a neurooptimal trainer, so it may be different. I know some people with, with lens may say that they see results much faster. Um, we find that maybe about 10% of people notice huge shifts after just one or two sessions. And then maybe there's about 10% of people that take much longer. But on average, most people choose to do between 15 and 30 sessions. Uh, and then at that point, people either decide that they want to uh, continue training for life and buy a system or uh, they get over the hump that they were trying to deal with and just move on with their life. Um, Another question people ask is, will it last? And that um, essentially, if people, if you, you know, if you've gotten over a hump with the training and something else happens that throws you off your game in life, you don't go back to square one. You just usually would do one or two booster sessions to get you back to your happy place. Uh, but life continues and you'll, you know, for, for a lot of people, it's, it's a choice, a lifestyle choice, to buy a system and continue training for life. And I know for me, if I go more than a month without training, I start to really uh, spin my wheels, not get a lot done, um, start to get a little bit irritable, and then I know it's, if, if I don't have time for a session, then I know it's definitely time that I do a session because uh, I just work more efficiently and uh, get more done when I'm training regularly. So I try to train at least once every two weeks. 
Uh, these are the reference books I was mentioning. The Symphony in the Brain is a great starter book. It's, uh, it's written by a journalist, so it's a real easy read and it's, uh, it's interesting. It's, um, it's a bit old now and it's not entirely comprehensive, but uh, it's definitely a good starting point. The Form Within is a book by a, uh, a doctor, a neurologist, uh, who understood the structure of the brain in a a way that is more holographic, and he was way ahead of his time. And this is the underlying philosophy that Neurooptimal is built on. So it's a good book to understand uh, where the Neurooptimal uh, paradigm is, is coming from. The Body Keeps the Score is a fantastic book that has brought a huge number of people to the field. Uh, it's not a book about neurofeedback, but it has a chapter about that in there. It's a book about uh, dealing with trauma. And that's um, a very highly, highly regarded book in the field of neurofeedback. Uh, this Neurofeedback, the first 50 years, just came out. It's really a collection of bios from uh, the movers and shakers in the field for the last 50 years. It's quite interesting, but it's also quite expensive. I'm not sure um, that's a good starter book, but it is, it is pretty interesting. And then uh, Neurofeedback in the Treatment of Developmental Trauma is. Um, by uh, Seaburn Fisher is another very well-regarded book in the field. And then there's the Norman Deutsch, The Brain That Changes Itself. So a little bit of uh, light reading. Uh, I just included this slide because, uh, you know, some people ask, is it, uh, how do we know it's not placebo? And I, uh, we adopted a border collie uh, a few years back who had severe thunderstorm anxiety. She would just go catatonic. Uh, in the corner, she would just shake and drool and not respond at all. And uh, it was really uh, frightening. I thought she was gonna have a heart attack. She just wouldn't be comforted no matter what we tried. So I brought the system home one day and we gave her a session. And uh, three days later, we had a bad thunderstorm and she went to her little corner, but she was totally alert. She was not drooling or shaking. And she uh, responded to us when we went over to pet her, she rolled over and, and was very responsive. So it was a very big change in just one session for that uh, little pup. And she had no idea, I, I think three days earlier, what we were expecting to happen from the training. So that was pretty cool. A lot of trainers do train their pets and horses too is uh, quite popular to train horses. So <clears throat> questions and answers. So the questions that came in, uh, let's see, sensor attachment. Having some trouble attaching the sensors, I get them attached and the client feels the coolness on the scalp, come back to check and it's sort of sitting on top of the hair. So for sweaty heads or people who use a uh, gel product in their hair, we like to use the meal prep, which is a sort of a alcohol gritty uh, scrub. And you just wipe a little bit of that on the scalp first and it cleans away the oils and that makes the sensors uh, stick much better. Also, it's important to you know, really separate the hair and get a good um, view of the scalp and use plenty of paste. Uh, it is, you know, it's something that you get used to and it gets easier with time. So just uh, try different things. Some people use hair clips to, to hold the hair back. But um, if you do check on your client and the sensor has come off, it's no big deal. Just pop it right back on. Uh, the ointment is called NuPrep, N-U-P-R-E-P, -E and you can get it on Amazon. It's like $10 a tub or something, or tube. So yeah, in Texas in the summer, we just use that on everybody. <laughs> we just assume they're all gonna be sweaty. Uh, let's see. So I have done 30 sessions on myself so far and not noticed many shifts yet. Do some take longer to notice changes? Yes. Um, it's, you know, there's so many things. Uh, there can be, if, if you're not noticing any shifts at all, I would be concerned and start looking at what we call extrinsic constraints, things that might interfere with progress. Um, some of the uh, common offenders are uh, prescription pain pills. Uh, the way that those work, they stop the brain from learning. And since neurofeedback is a learning process, that can interfere a little bit with the ability to retain the information and, and to move forward. Uh, but we don't tell people don't train if you're on these things because uh, you will still get benefit, it just might take longer. 
And at some point, people tend to reduce their, their need for medication. So we do encourage uh, talking to your doctor, especially if you see anything that might be a sign of being over-medicated, um, that kind of thing. Uh, there's also, you know, if you live in a home with a moldy environment and you're re-exposing yourself to mold constantly, the sessions may make you feel good, but then you're going back to the mold and, and feeling bad. Uh, other, other things, if there's a, a hostile environment in your workplace or at home that you're constantly subjecting yourself to, um, you know, what typically happens is people wake up and, and leave those environments or make changes. And that's one of the reasons with children that we, we now require parents to train with them because they can't really make changes that need to happen in their homes. And when the parents train too, they wake up and they start to make those changes. So the children uh, come out ahead much faster. So what, uh, oops. What else? Um, I think I've covered all the questions. Do you, do you guys have any other questions? I tried to put in the most common ones. If you come up with questions that you can't think of now, feel free to uh, email me, Nikki at serenitynf.com, and I'm happy to chat, or you can call me or uh, get on our uh, our Facebook discussion groups. There's the Neurofeedback Community Group, which is uh, open to trainers, um, end users, renters, um, people who are just curious. It's just a discussion group, and you'll find people there from all different backgrounds and uh, very passionate trainers who use different systems. So you'll get a variety of uh, responses to questions. Uh, also, we have a, a Women in Neurofeedback group, which is a just for women group that is sort of a, a support on your journey, either as a end user or as a, um, uh, as a trainer. Uh, the reason it's just for women is uh, we noticed that there are a lot of uh, people that want to discuss what's going on with them, but they don't want to discuss it in the uh, public group. And it's kind of a more private sheltered area for uh, female trainers and end users to help support each other. So, um, Anything else? Well, I hope you found this helpful. And uh, I guess if there's no other questions, then we'll say good night <laughs> or good afternoon. <laughs>